Hello again, everybody. We're going to talk here about acute respiratory distress syndrome, something that you're going to encounter quite a bit in the ICU. Uh, this is a complication of many different things, particularly inflammatory disorders, pneumonia, infections. Uh, so it is frequently encountered. Uh, and, and so you're going to want to know what this looks like, how to diagnose it, and to some degree, how to treat it. Even though this disorder is treated supportively, you need to be able to identify it because there are a number of things that we do for these patients to improve their survival. And as we'll see, there is a pretty big mortality rate with ARDS. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the I button in the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated. Okay, so ARDS, what is it? Well, it's really just acute respiratory failure following a systemic or a pulmonary insult. So the classic things that come up are acute pancreatitis caused from widespread inflammation um, or sepsis. Uh, that's really the number one cause, so you should know that. So you have sepsis for some other reason. Let's say you have a bladder infection or a GI infection or something like that. You develop sepsis, hy hypotension, fever, all that stuff. And then two days later, maybe a week later, they begin to develop difficulty breathing, crackles, rails, etc., and they just decompensate. That's what you see with ARDS. You can also get it from, uh, from direct insult to the lungs, so things like smoke inhalation, even vaping, which is a big problem nowadays, um, gastric aspiration, or uh, uh, if you inhale water, if you almost drown or something like that. Uh, those are just a number of ways that you can develop ARDS. Uh, the mechanism by which this happens is not very well understood, uh, but what we do know is that the alveoli fill with this proteinaceous fluid and in inflammatory cells. So if you remember back to when I talked about uh, the uh, gas exchange, um, when we talked about the AA gradient, which if you don't know what that is, please go back and watch my physiology video. But remember that we have the alveolus here, we have interstitium, oh sorry, alveolus, interstitium, and then we have capillary here, right? And what happens is that gas is exchanged. So when we, uh, let's say that we measure, uh, another way that you can measure gas exchange is the DLCO, right? So carbon monoxide is transferred from the alveolus through the interstitium and into the capillary. That means that at any point, if there's any kind of, um, I hate to use the word obstruction, but if there's any kind of roadblock in this, uh, along this path, you're going to have a decreased DLCO, meaning you'll have poor exchange of gas. And that's going to also manifest typically in an increased AA gradient. Uh, so a number of ways that this can happen. Pulmonary hypertension. So you've got thickening of the arterioles. Interstitial edema. or Well, interstitial edema or interstitial fibrosis. That's going to block exchange. Or if you've got fluid collecting in the alveoli. Uh, that's another way that that can happen. And that's what happens with ARDS. Okay, so there's just a number of ways that you can get this elevated AA gradient, and uh, that can be measured either by, uh, well, AA gradient would be measured by, uh, by um, pulmonary function tests uh, and or uh, more commonly arterial blood gases, um, but then the, uh, the DLCO can be measured uh, on its own. Either way, what we're looking at here is impaired gas exchange. Okay. Um, so we have an elevated AA gradient. You can also see that as a low DLCO. Uh, ARDS can be accompanied by other organ system failure. You see that commonly in sepsis. You may have acute renal failure. Uh, and then the major differential is cardiogenic pulmonary edema. And as you're going to see, when you look at radiographs, it looks very similar. Remember that cardiogenic pulmonary edema or any pulmonary edema uh, where you're at is right here, where you have 
impaired gas exchange due to uh, fluid collecting in the interstitium, which is going to impair gas exchange. So it looks the same in your labs. Um, there's a very easy way though that we can differentiate that out and it's called a BNP and that's a lab that you can get. If that's present, then you do indeed have a congestive heart failure and that would likely be the reason for your symptoms as opposed to ARDS. So we look for a history of a known or unknown trigger, look for pancreatitis, look for pneumonia, look for infection, look for a history of sepsis. Uh, the symptoms are just very typical of, of uh, respiratory failure. So labored breathing, retractions, tachypnea, crackles, and rails. On physical exam and on uh, vitals, you'll see low saturation levels, even though you're giving supplemental oxygen. That's really a hallmark. You keep giving oxygen and they're just not, their, their saturation is not improving, their oxygenation is not improving. And remember, that's because there's a problem at the alveolus. So there's a problem with gas exchange. You can give more oxygen that may improve them, but just not to the degree that we expect. The best initial step is always to stabilize the patient. Uh, generally, mechanical ventilation is needed. Uh, you can do PEEP as well. I don't know why I have that in parentheses. Uh, for diagnosis, the best initial diagnostic test is a chest x-ray. That's going to really clue you in, and you'll be able to uh, determine that you're dealing with ARDS or possibly pulmonary edema. Um, and then at that point, you need to make your differentiation based on the BNP. However, you may not need to get that if the patient has no history of cardiac cardiac disease, it may be pretty obvious that they have ARDS, especially if they have a recent history of an infection or pancreatitis or something along those lines where you can suspect ARDS clinically. Um, all right, now there's this thing called the PaO2-FiO2 ratio, and that diagnoses ARDS. Now, how do we get that? Well, we need to get arterial blood gases, so that should be on your initial order, and that should always be uh, ordered anyway when you have a patient with respiratory distress. So chest x-ray and ABGs. And you'll be able to calculate the PaO2 to FiO2 ratio, and that will diagnose uh, ARDS. We'll, we'll go into how we do this. Uh, all right. So remember also to investigate for the underlying cause. Remember that the number one cause is sepsis. So you should be getting blood, sputum, and urine cultures and start empiric antibiotics if you suspect an infection. All right, what do we see? So on chest x-ray, you'll see these bilateral pulmonary opacities. The cardiac silhouette should be generally normal. Now, it can be difficult to see the cardiac silhouette if you're dealing with uh, really significant opacities, but you should be able to see it, and it should be normal. You're not going to have this big, massive heart that we would expect to see if it was cardiogenic pulmonary edema. But again, if you don't know, you can get the BMP, you can get an echo. That will tell you um, it's generally pretty clear-cut. ABGs, your PaO2 will be low by definition because you're not exchanging gas. You may have hypercapnia uh, or you may not. BMP, if you do get it, it'll be normal in ARDS. If it were elevated, then we would suspect cardiogenic pulmonary edema, which has a very similar clinical picture, uh, but the cause is different. Uh, in cardiogenic pulmonary edema, we have a fluid overload, so we need to address that. Versus with ARDS, it's not really a fluid overload. It's leakage into the alveoli. The pulmonary capillary wedge pressure will be normal if you were to get that, and the PaO2 to FiO2 ratio will be less than 300. This is so important, and I'll go into this shortly. Um, now, this is the Berlin definition of ARDS. Uh, it's basically everything I went into, chest imaging, origin of the pulmonary edema, and then this PaO2 to FiO2 ratio, uh, which, again, we'll go into this is what you would see on chest radiograph. Just take a look at the cardiac silhouette. Notice how it's normal, okay? So you're roughly, you know, that length. Um, so you got a normal cardiac silhouette. This looks like a slightly enlarged cardiac silhouette maybe, but it's not overwhelmingly enlarged. But what you see here is the bilateral pulmonary opacities. Again, you see kind of the same thing here. It can be difficult to visualize the cardiac silhouette when you have significant opacities. 
The management, uh, we really focus on diagnosing and resolving the underlying cause, which is usually sepsis in about a third of cases. These patients will be admitted to the ICU. We also put them on positive and expiratory uh, pressure to keep the alveoli open. Remember, this is kind of similar to that neonatal respiratory distress syndrome where you have difficulty keeping those alveoli open, and we need to keep them open, otherwise it becomes even more difficult to oxygenate. Uh, so by keeping them on that positive end pressure, we keep the alveoli from collapsing. And so that's why we put them on PEEP. It also reduces the FiO2 requirement, so we're not giving as high a concentration of oxygen. Remember that when you have inflammation, oxygen is not the best thing to have because oxygen can be the genesis of free radicals, which can worsen things. So we want to try to keep that FiO2 lower, um, as, as low as we can, while continuing to uh, keep them oxygenated, and PEEP helps us do that. We also want to try to do a lower tidal volume. You don't need to know this, but about four to eight mil, milliliters per kilogram of predicted body weight is what we do. Uh, you want to titrate their saturation to 88 to 95, probably err on the slightly higher end of that. There's more and more evidence showing that higher saturations are okay. Uh, or you can titrate them to a PaO2 of more than 60. Uh, you may place a central line. Really what we're looking for here is because we may be giving them fluids, we want to prevent pulmonary edema. Um, that could worsen things naturally. Um, so that may be done. You may position them in the prone position, and then you can follow progress with the PaO2 to FiO2 ratio. And steroids do not help. That's a common mis a misconception. Okay, so what is this PaO2, FiO2? Well, remember that PaO2 is the measurement on the arterial blood gas that indicates the partial pressure of oxygen in the blood, and FiO2 is the fraction of oxygen in the air that the patient is breathing. So room air is 0 0.21 oxygen, so 21% oxygen. Okay, that's always what we breathe in. That's just oxygen on Earth. Uh, you can just round that to 20%, doesn't really matter. So that's the minimum that the patient will breathe. Now, if you're giving them 100% oxygen, then you have to use that number. Now, if you have them on a nasal cannula with a, a certain flow rate, what we do then is we, uh, we take the 20 and then we add 0 0.04, um, I'm sorry, no, 20 plus 4 times the number of liters per minute. So let's say that they're on five liters per minute. Then what you would do here is you'd have 20 plus 20 and that's 40. Okay, so that's that's pretty much how you do it. If it was three liters per minute, it would be four times three is 12, 20 plus 12 is 32. And that would be in a percent or in decimal form. Okay, Th you'll see how this comes into play in a little bit. Uh, now with PEEP, you can adjust the FiO2 yourself. Okay, um, so let's let's do an example, um, and we'll come back to that. So we have a 76-year-old man who is status post laparoscopic cholecystectomy, post-op day four, complaining of shortness of breath, dyspnea, purulent sputum, possibly a pneumonia. His vitals are consistent with pneumonia, slightly elevated heart rate, temperature, and he's satting low. Uh, physical exam shows adventitious lung sounds. Nasal cannula is increased to six liters per minute. Okay, so he's on six liters per minute. Um, and uh, we don't know his percentage of oxygen. So we're going to say here, let's just say that he's on uh, regular uh, 0 0.2 oxygen. And so then we need to add four times six liters. And so that's going to be I know I should probably use the decimal point here, uh, but in any case, it's going to be 0 0.2 plus 0 0.24 equals 0 0.44. So that's the FiO2, is 0 0.44. All right, and so that improves the saturation to 86% where it remains. Chest x-ray is pending. Arterial blood gases show a PaO2 of 51. Okay, so what do we do now? And I do not have my calculator, so I'm going to have to bring this up. Uh, all right. So um, what you then do is you will, uh, to get your ratio, so it's PaO2 to FiO2. So we're taking 
51 divided by 0 0.44. And I'm going to need to bring up my calculator here to figure out exactly what that is. I probably should have written it down. So zero, uh, 51 divided by 0 0.44 is about 116. Don't worry about the units. Okay, so what we know then from that is that this is moderate ARDS. So severe ARDS has a ratio of, P, uh, of less than 100, PaO2 to FiO2. Moderate is 100 to 200, mild is 200 to 300, and above 300 is normal. Now let's, let's take into consideration what normal is. So a normal PaO2 would be about, let's say 90 millimeters of mercury. And a normal FiO2, if you're just breathing room air, is going to be 0 0.2. So if you were to do the math then, 90 divided by 0 0.2 is 450. So obviously that would be much higher than 300, but here we had 116. So what we're seeing here is that the PaO2 is going to stay relatively low compared to the FiO2. The FiO2, meaning we're giving them more and more oxygen, unfortunately that's not raising the PaO2. So the PaO2 is low relative to the FiO2, which is giving you a lower ratio. And so it's this PaO2 to FiO2 ratio that's really going to help you determine whether the patient has ARDS. So to recap, ARDS is characterized by a severe inflammatory process which causes diffuse alveolar, epithelial, and capillary damage. It is associated with the trigger, usually sepsis, but it can also be shock trauma, pancreatitis, toxic inhalation, and other things. Uh, stabilize the patient with supplemental oxy oxygen, get the chest x-ray and ABGs. If you're thinking possibly heart failure, then get a BMP. Uh, the chest x-ray will show bilateral infiltrates and usually a normal cardiac silhouette, or at least their baseline. The PaO2 FiO2 ratio less than 300 is diagnostic of ARDS. Remember how to calculate that. Remember how to adjust it based on uh, their flow rate on nasal cannula. Treat the underlying cause. We use a low tidal volume to uh, reduce barotrauma. That's a big problem with patients on mechanical ventilation. Uh, so keep that in mind. The mortality of ARDS is 30 to 50%. So you've got to make sure that you're managing this well. This is a life-threatening condition. And so these patients should always be managed in the ICU.